Before I talk about a little bit more about the algorithm, I want to segue a little bit and talk about um, DNA versus protein again. And I challenged you a couple of classes ago to translate these sequences, so I'm not going to make you translate them again. But remember that we had a couple of DNA sequences. So here's one, and here's another. And when I gave you these sequences before, I said, look, there's one similarity here. There's one similarity here. There's two similarities here. And there's no similarities on the end. And so at the DNA level, we have four out of 12 similarities. And of course, I made you do the translation. And what you found out is that, in fact, they translate to be the same amino acids. Yeah? Remember that? And so this comes back to haunt us when we do these kind of word searches because we need to worry about are we searching in DNA space and in or it gets a little more complex than this and there's an additional layer that we have to worry about. So here we're just going off the rails. Oh my god. Everybody's like, what are you doing? This is supposed to be a computer science class and there's like chemistry. It's insane. I don't even know what any of this means. Okay. Just kidding. Okay. So here's an amino acid. This is a structure of an amino acid. I do not expect you to learn the structures of amino acids. If you want to know the structure, just Google structure of, in this case, it's tyrosine. Okay. So there's one amino acid. And here's another amino acid. And yet again, do not learn the structure unless you're Really, you know, thinking you might like to be a chemist. Okay, here's another amino acid. So we've got two amino acids. This one is an amino acid called phenylalanine. Have you guys heard of phenylalanine? Yeah. Okay. No? And then one more crazy amino acid structure. And this one is aspartic acid. Okay, so here's three amino acids. I'm not going to draw all 20. You get the idea. By the way, these are amino acids, yeah? This is what's called an amine group, NH2. NH2, NH2 is an amine group. And then this double bond with an oxygen and an OH, that's the acid part of it. So it's an amino acid. Amino acid, amino acid, or acid. Okay, now, here's where we're going to get a little tricky. So remember, there are three bases that are used to encode each amino acid. So for tyrosine, you can encode tyrosine with TAT or TAC. Yeah? With phenylalanine, you can encode phenylalanine with TTT or TTC. And with aspartic acid, you can encode aspartic acid with GAT or GAC. So if we think about this from a DNA level, if I'm going from tyrosine to phenylalanine, then I just have to change one letter here or one letter here, and I can switch at the codon, I can say, I want to put a tyrosine in my protein. I want to put a phenylalanine in my protein. Yeah? Just one little base pair change. However, at the DNA level, I can also make one little base pair change here, or one little base pair change here. And I can switch from saying, I want to put tyrosine in my, I mean, in my protein sequence to putting aspartic acid protein sequence. So to go from tyrosine to phenylalanine or tyrosine to aspartic acid, you only have to make one base pair change. However, I think you'll agree that tyrosine basically looks the same as phenylalanine. Have you guys actually figured out what the difference between these two is yet? There's only one little difference, right? It's just this little group down here that's the only difference between the tyrosine and the phenylalanine. In contrast, going from tyrosine to aspartic acid, there's a huge difference. It doesn't even look the same. It doesn't have that thing. It's called a ring structure. It doesn't have that thing anywhere near it. 
so you could imagine that if you're a protein and you're quite happy being a protein and you've got a tyrosine and all of a sudden it switches to a phenylalanine, and you're like, eh, it's okay. Uh, what's one little hydroxyl group between friends? On the other hand, if you're quite happy being a protein and all of a sudden your tyrosine switched to aspartic acid, you're like, holy moly, this is not going to work, dude. And that's exactly what happens in biology, right? So you can go from tyrosine to phenylalanine relatively easily. You can't go from tyrosine to aspartic acid without really screwing around with structures of proteins.